And what's going on? Fontaine here, VIPSoundLab.com. And I'm on the new Machine 2.3 update. I'm pretty sure you guys are well aware of this. I just want to go over some of the uh, new features with you guys. And let's go ahead and get into it. So let's go ahead and go over a few of the new features here. As you can see right here, I have a drum kit loaded up. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you, uh, well, actually the first thing I'm going to show you is the fix uh, that's been applied to dragging and dropping of the MIDI patterns. So for example, I have my Cycle Acoustic Drum Kit loaded up right now. You guys can pick that up on the website, by the way. So let's go ahead and uh, get into that. Let's go to make a MIDI pattern right quick. One thing I also noticed, it pulls the MIDI notes um, together a lot better now, in my opinion, and that's just my opinion. To me, it feels like the PPQ value, as far as the parts per quantization, even though I have this set to 16th notes right now. Uh, let me get this. Uh... I'll have to wait for you guys. Right there, I have it set for uh, 16th notes. I don't know. It just, it just, to me, it just feels like the clock is rolling a lot smoother. You know, I don't have to sit there and quantize as much. Like it, I don't know. It's just, I, it's just my opinion. To me, it feels like the new update actually pulls the MIDI notes together better, and I'm finding myself having to do a lot less of quantizing after I make a MIDI pattern. Now, one thing you can do is you can right click here. You can quantize directly from the software. As you see right here, you can do a full quantize at 100%, or you can do a half quantize at 50%. Some of these features were inside the 2.0 uh, uh, update anyway. One thing I wish Native Instruments would have did is when you're on your hardware controller, it still isn't synced up in certain areas of the software. Like I would like to, you know, do certain things from the hardware controller and have the software actually emulate what I'm doing inside the hardware. But that's only on some screens, not all the screens. So another cool feature I'm really loving about this is when you're getting into like these really crowded uh sessions like for example if you have like a lot of drum kits loaded up as you can see right here here's a lot of attributes of tags and filters it has these little drop down slots like this right here so now you actually can shrink those views so that's a very cool feature that i'm loving on that so let's say for example i'm going to copy what i did here i'm going to paste it here on group b and on group b what i'm going to do is i'm going to erase these MIDI notes like this here just cut them off okay so let's say I was in a session in the mix and I was over here and this was the beat pattern that I did and I was like hey you know what I have this drum kit over here or maybe you know I just want to do something different works the same just grab your little uh, drag and drop of the MIDI uh, pattern icon here which turns this little icon here okay and I'll just drag it directly onto the, what I had over here which is a blank uh, sound kit that's over here so I'll go like this here drop it on there you can see right there, the MIDI pattern now appears exactly as it was over here. Okay. But one thing you got to be mindful of is however you record your MIDI, that's how it stays. Sound one is always going to be on MIDI channel one. Sound two is always going to be on MIDI channel two, so on and so on and so on. So in other words, for example, let's say if I erase this like this here, right? So if I have the exact same kit as on group A here, but let's say I moved this kick, say down to here, and let's say I had this hi-hat down to here and this here. Like if I was over here moving things around, okay, and then drag that MIDI pattern, don't think that the MIDI pattern is gonna, you know, move your sounds around here. These are your sound slots. Okay, when I go like this here, it's not gonna be the same. Like if I play that pattern, it's gonna be completely crazy. Like, like if I solo that channel right there, See what I mean? It locks the MIDI on the channels. Very important feature. Now, it's automatically going to uh, adjust your root note too. So, 
to me, that's a cool feature because there were like a lot of reported uh, issues. People were having problems when they were dragging and driving their MIDI patterns or something to that effect. They, they were like glitching, you know. With me, I don't know. I've been really lucky. <laughs> like I've like when whenever I use machine, I rarely have any problems, bugs or glitches uh, with machine. So I really can't complain there. All right, so let's go ahead and get into some more of the new features. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the focus module, how you can get that set up. Right here, you have what's called your channel properties. Right here, you have what's called your plugin properties. This little icon right here, if you click on it, will just allow you to view your automation lane and things of that nature, adjust your pages if you're doing macros and things of that nature. We have tutorial videos on that if you want to take a look at that. So let's jump on the channel uh, properties icon here. This is your group level, this is your master level, and this is your sound level. Each one of these levels can manipulate and do different things inside your uh, inside your machine software. You know, we have detailed tutorial videos on that if you want to take a look at that also. So under sound, under input, you have audio and you have MIDI. Okay, if you select MIDI here, okay, you notice that your source appears here. You now have the new focus module, as you can see right there. Okay, you have your default mode, your focus mode, none, all, and machine controller, you know, or whatever type of external MIDI device that you have set up. Again, none now actually means none. It will, like, you can tap on your hardware controller, your keyboard, or whatever, and absolutely no MIDI will come into machine. So if you're using focus mode, you know, you can do live scene performances and DAWs, uh, such as Ableton Live, uh, Pro Tools, and things of that nature. And how that works is, Basically, you know, you can jump through your scenes just by tapping on the MIDI. You have an icon here where it says MIDI scene change. So, for example, let's say if I put this to MIDI note like this here. And then let's say I was inside Ableton Live. And I'm going to show you the easy way that I actually do it. Under sync, you're going to go down to your MIDI scene change. Select MIDI note like this here. All right. And then inside your DAW. We want to have the MIDI to and from machine. On the instance of machine, we have the MIDI from all ends, channel one. And I'm going to show you how this triggers and how it could be a really useful tool on that. Let's see here. I'm going to press play here and record here. Now, of course, I'm not trying to make a beat or anything like that. I'm just showing how the scenes were changing. If you notice how the scenes were changing by me using the MIDI notes. Now, if you look over here, here's, here's the actual MIDI notes themselves. So we open these up like this here. And I'm not trying to be really sophisticated or I'm not trying to do anything special here. I'm doing it this way just to show you that the MIDI notes here is what's going to be triggering the scenes. So I'm going to expand these out a little bit just to make it easier to see like this. I'm going to move these over like this. Okay, so these are your, your scene changes actually taking place from your program, from your program change. Your program changes, as you can see right here. So, <clears throat> for example, let me go over here to machine and open this up. And if this window will cooperate with me and stay open when I do this here, which it did, thank goodness, you will notice how the scenes are going to change because of the MIDI notes here, okay? Notice how it's over here on scene three, then with the two. If you look above here, you can see how it's changing down below.
Okay, and I did it that way because I, I felt this was a more easy way to make it really jazz in someone's head to understand exactly how these MIDI notes are making these uh, scene changes take place on your machine um, hardware controller. As long as you have the scene button pressed, you know, you'll go ahead and uh, trigger your scenes. If you don't, what happen is you'll just trigger your um, your drum sounds down here. All right, and there you have it. That's how you can record your MIDI scene changes inside of Ableton Live 9. Also, from your hardware controller, you can press Shift. And by holding down Shift, if you look on the top right-hand corner of your screen, uh, for example, on the MK1 right now, because I've been getting a lot of requests for the MK1 users, uh, they feel like they've been abandoned. You press Shift. And if you look on the right screen, your last button on the right, you'll, you'll notice on the top left, it'll say input. And when you move that, that arrow back and forth, like I'm doing here, you can select through your little instances like this here. All right, I'll tell you what, it's gonna take a look at some of the new effects. Let's go to the plugin property icon here. Let's jump on group here. And you select your little plus icon here. Now, for example, you notice that the old reverbs are now called legacies. The plate reverb module has now been added to the new module and the old reverb module is called legacy. Any of the old modules will be labeled uh, as legacy. I would imagine in the future as they do future updates, you know, they might have some more uh, new modules in the future. Uh, they have a new cabinet uh, effect engine here, a filter here. I was messing around with some of these uh, last night actually and i'm really loving that cabinet that cabinet module is not too bad so what i did for you guys to make life easier for you i uh set up some preset effects here let's see right here machine plugin drum preset pack as you can see right here here's the modes that i have inside the preset pack it's just some some little custom drum filters you know if you want to add a little flavor uh onto your drums so let's go ahead and uh take a look at some of this let's get these midi notes here out the way we don't need anything extra on that all right so the modes i have i have the drum distortion analog mode i made the drum distortion uh moholland mode moholland mode is just basically is based off i think it's called the screamer engine and guitar rig uh so the old one or the legacy one i should say i think it's, it's called moholland now uh reverb hall i have a room mode for that a reverb uh, room mode. Well, actually, this is a plate room mode. I have some with and output EQ presets, uh, some drum filter presets, the reflex module. That's another new uh, effect engine that they have in there. They have a new one called reflex now. And what else did I put in there? I put a gritty drum cabinet and a 4x12 gritty drum cabinet. That's just add a little grit and grime. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of these presets. Again, these are free on, on the website. Just go to the website and download it now.
This is the plug-in drum preset pack that I have on the site right now. You can download this absolutely for free. It's going to give you all these little, uh, you know, effects. You know, if you just want to get a jump in the game and, you know, get in there and have some some dope effects like right out the box, save a little time. We got that for you guys. And we also have uh, the psychoacoustic kit. These are the actual sounds. You get all these sounds right here for free. Uh, of course, the full version has more sounds, uh, but this is just to give you a little taste of the kit. You know, get in there and, you know, start banging out some nice little, you know, patterns or whatever and we also do like a little midi pattern in there if you want to you know use that as like a little nice little starting point and it also has the machine 2.3 artwork so you can go ahead and you can add that artwork uh to your machine software to make uh your gui just look a little more attractive all right all right so that's it for now it's your boy fontaine vip soundlab.com just going over a few of the new features inside the machine 2.3 update don't forget that the, the drum synth has some new modules that are in there, such as the breaker. Yeah, and the drum synth has some new sound engines in there as well, such as the breaker engine, the high engine, the cymbal, and the hybrid engine. So those engines are applied to the hi-hat module, uh, and the tom has high and the snare has a uh, breaker. So, you know, you can get in there and check those out too. All right, so that's pretty much it. It's your boy Fontaine, VIPSoundLab.com. And I will see you guys on the next one. Peace.